Okay, so we've been here for a few days and I'm finally getting some time where I can do a proper installation of my Starlink. Here it is, mounted to a flagpole buddy on the ladder on the back of my Riverstone 39RKFB. What I've been doing for the past few months is when I set up, I just kind of run the cable on the ground, um, just all the way underneath the RV, and then I bring it up into the garage where the router is, and I can plug it into that outlet there. Obviously, um, if once I shut this door, the cable gets crimped there, as you can see. So, my idea is to make a more permanent installation by actually back over here. I will put a hole right here and I will install this waterproof Cat5 connector here. And then I will run a cable from the interior here all the way through the other side. And I've already run that cable. Let's see if I can get here, one here and shake your camera. Here is a um, shielded twisted pair cable. It's uh, UV outside and burial rated. Um, I've covered uh, the end of it with some electrical tape just to protect it. Uh, the idea was originally to bring it down through this way and run it underneath here um, actually inside this wraps around but there's a clear shot you run a fish tape and you can drag it all the way there I'd bring it down run it across here and then bring it ultimately all the way through and then it would come up here through one of these I put a rubber grommet there and then run the cable in here and house the router in here I had a little bit of concern that I was going to be bringing that shielded twisted pair across this power and I was afraid of some EFI. I don't really think that would be a big deal. Um, that shielded twisted pair uh, should really prevent any interference, but to be on the safe side, I've decided to run the cable instead this way and down this side. And that has proven to be a bit more challenging. Um, I tried to run a fish tape and I've already run the wire. I ran a fish tape in here um, and tried to get the corner here, but I couldn't, so I took this light off and I just uh, fished it through manually, grabbed it with my hand, and then pulled it through. And this is just temporary now, just kind of a dry run to get the route right. And I will get some corrugated split sleeve here, and I'll mount it up here. This is aluminum under here, so I've got some fasteners, and I will attach the corrugated there, run that line down. Once I get up around here, um, I'll actually, I think I already got it run. Oh, I don't, but uh, once I finish it up, I'll bring it through that hole there, corrugate it again, and then I bring it up where I've already run another fish tape, this green one. I'll bring it up through there, which ultimately will come up through here. As you can see, I already got it run. Um, and then I will put the router in here and I've got um, a shelf in some 3d stuff that I'm printing <clears throat> so I can mount it in there permanently now some will be concerned uh, it's not a best place for it signal will be weak well I've already run heat map test on the upstairs all around and I'm not losing anything no latency it's all green uh, I'm a network guy I know what I'm doing. Uh, this isn't uh, just hit or miss experimentation. Uh, I've got a fair amount of network experience running cable, um, network engineering, and architecture. So I'm doing it by the book. Um, might be more than what other people want to do, uh, but it's the way that I do things. And also, <clears throat> having a wireless here mid ship is a little bit better than the um, stock Wi Fi solution, which is all the way up in the front of the unit. Um, the only thing that might concern me a little bit, but it, 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 the heat map proves that it's not a concern actually, is I had this metal um, girder here. 
but <clears throat> shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so the cable was definitely diff more difficult running on this side than it was on that side, as I pointed out earlier, but uh, we should be good to go. So, here you go, get that done. Um, I'll show you how I'll cut the cable, how I'll splice the cable, the connectors I'll use, all of that. So I'll go get that started and I'll put in a few more videos in a minute. All right, getting ready to do the first cut. I've made sure that the router is powered off. And here's the cable. And I'm gonna cut the cable pretty low. I'm gonna do it right about here. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna do that. There you go, use my Lyman scissors. It's because I'm gonna put the connector right here. And what I wanna do is have enough slack so that this cable comes down and kind of loops up and it goes like this so that there is a drip loop here once that's turned like this, right? So this will be an angle like that. So any water that collects on this will come down. It'll reach this point and drip off rather than if it were just straight like this and going in tight, <clears throat> then the water would have a tendency to go into the connector. Even though it's an IP67 rated waterproof connector, I just don't want to take any uh, unnecessary chances. So leave a little bit of service loop like that um, and that should be fine. All right, so now I'm going to take the uh, dish off, bring it inside, and I'm going to uh, splice that connector or put a connectorizer with the RJ45 shielded connector. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so here is the end of the cable from the dish. The dish is over to my right here off camera. So what we're going to do is uh, before we strip it, we're going to put it through the waterproof connector, which has a couple of pieces here. I'll put it through. It's easier to do this before you strip it because there's just uh, putting all the little wires through is a pain. So there is another black piece in there that didn't come out, but we're going through it. That's fine. And we put this through here. It's a little tight. Sometimes you want to use a little bit of lubricant on there uh, to get it in. As a matter of fact, I'll use a little of olive oil to do that. I'll be right back. All right, here's a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna put it kind of around here just to move that up a little bit. And it should go through much easier now. There you go. And then I'll just wipe off the residue, keep it clean. There you go. So that's um, pretty much that end of it. Now what you do, um, you don't have to put this on yet. What you do is you connectorize it yet first, and then that connector will insert into here. So I'll show you how we do this. I'm gonna use the um, strip tool on, on this particular tool. I'm gonna go back about two inches or so, and squeeze down, and then you give it about one rotation. That's usually sufficient to get it done. There you go. And that'll score the cable, and then you can just snap the cable, boom, takes it off, there you go. Now you peel back, this is the shield. Try to keep that intact as best you can for now. You will end up cutting some of it off. And then this is the drain wire, and you keep that as well. Some people refer to this as the rip cord. In shielded twisted pair, it is not the rip cord. Um, it is the drain wire which kind of bonds to the shield um, to drain off the interference. And then you have this piece of uh, cellophane that just kind of holds the pairs together. And we're gonna actually twist that and then cut that off. There you go. Then I'm gonna do a quick inspection, just make sure I didn't nick any of the wires, which I didn't. Then what you wanna do is separate the pairs and the way you do that is by using a piece of the insulation you put it between the pairs you might have to separate them a little bit to get started put it between the pairs and then just twist it down there you go do that with each one of them Now 
Now this is, some people do it with their fingers, and um, I used to do it with my fingers a long time ago when I was doing a lot of them, and it really wore out my fingers. Then I found this trick, and I've used it ever since. All right, once you get these all separated, what you want to do is comb them out and remove the crinkles. Just kind of squeeze them to remove that twist. Some people will use, like, the edge of a tool. Um, this tool has a bit of a sharp edge, so I'm not going to use that. I don't have anything else with a smooth edge. So, I'm just going to use my fingers for now. Like the smooth edge of a screwdriver shaft, for example, you could just squeeze the cable between your finger and that and straighten these out. That works well, too. All right. All right. Now, you can see that I have a diagram here. There's two different ways to... Um, <clears throat> two different standards that are used in Ethernet cable. This, connect, this cable really isn't... Um, Ethernet cable, the way that it's be, been configured for the dish, but it, you can wire it to either of these standards. As long as you maintain consistency in what kind of cables you're using, you'll be fine. Some people will even just uh, won't follow this convention. They'll just wire it so that both ends match up, and you can do that, and that, that's perfectly fine. But the reason why I'm using a standard is because between this end of the connector that'll go through the body of the RV. I'm going to use a prefab 568 cable. So if I go for 568B wired here, I never have to be concerned with what kind of cable I have going in between. If I just make sure I get a 568B. I never have to remember how I wired this if I did some other unique non-standard way. So that's why I'm going with the 568B, just for sanity's sake, if nothing else. Um, if you do use like 568 on one side and then not the same on the other, then you run the risk of twi um, splitting or flipping the pairs, which could run into issues with polarization, um, crosstalk, and all those kinds of things. So best to stay away from doing that if you can. All right, so now what you want to do is just arrange them in the color. Some people, this is, I call this orange with uh, trace, orange trace, orange solid. And then we'll go with the green trace. You kind of just want to make sure coming out of the cable itself, you got them kind of lined up on the bottom so that they're just not crowding each other. All right. And you just kind of line them up. Like this. So they're lined up on the top here. Okay. Then you kind of hold those tight and you kind of comb them through and make sure that you have them all lined up at the top here. And then you'll notice that they're all kind of uneven. With this tool, it has a cut and you can put them all in here and just cut them all at once. And that kind of evens them off. And I'll put a link in the description to all these tools and connectors that I'm using. Now what you do is you feed these through. This is a pass-through connector, shielded, twisted pair, pass-through connector. And you kind of put them through here and you push them through. Now with these connectors, the conductors are offset, one high, one high, one low. And that becomes kind of difficult to get them all in, putting them flat and slide through because one has to be low, one has to be high. So I actually do it manually, which a lot of people are gonna say, oh, that, why do it like that? That's the, you know, dumb way of doing it. But I can tell you that it's really effective doing it. And so I'm gonna do that manually just by, you put the tab on the bottom side. I'm gonna put the orange trace through first, make sure it gets through the right hole. Once it's through, I kind of bend over the tip there a bit so it doesn't fall out. And then I'll put the next one through. Line it up. There you go. Okay, as you can see, I struggle with that a bit, but it is through. Got a little bit extra cellophane here, so I'm going to cut that off, get it out of my way. Okay, now you got to. I'm going to confirm that I got the conductors all in the right place. I've got the orange trace, orange solid the green trace, blue solid, blue trace, 
green solid, brown trace, brown solid. Now I'm gonna pull these through as tight as I can and push the insulation into the connector as far as possible. Now this insulation, shielded twisted pair is a little thicker. So what you wanna do is kinda of crimp this down just a little bit and then I'll let it get into the connector a bit more. Takes a little bit of work. Get it in there. There it goes. You want to pull it up and get the distance between here and the insulation as minimal as possible just to hold the spec. Now this isn't really um, CAT6 termination because it's not an Ethernet cable per se. So it's not that critical, but you know, if you want to try to do it right, just try to do it right. I think that's about the best I'm going to get. Now I do know that the drain wire is touching the metal, the shield's touching the metal connector. That's all good. That means it's bonded. I'm pulling that through. Now I think that's about as far as I can get it. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to twist these ends way up the top here just so it's easier to get them through the, um, the tool here to terminate it. Get the tool ready. And let's see, I think I put these through. This tool, I always forget which way it goes. I think this is the way it goes. It's only gonna go in one way. And these are kinda long and in the way, but there you go. Oops, the green one's in the way. Just to get it through here, man. All right, he's gonna go in, push it in as far as possible, and then just squeeze that down. And it's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna crimp the connector, and it's also gonna cut off the ends flush. Take that out, and there it is finished. We don't need these conductors anymore. They're all bonded in there, so we can cut those off as close to the connector as possible. There you go. Now it's a tight connector. Now what I can do is pull it all back, push this in here, pull it back a little bit so it's snug. That's going to come up right to the end. And then it's going to go into here. There it is. Comes through. Just make sure that we got this. I'm going to screw this down pretty tight. You have to use a pair of pliers to do it, that's okay. Probably will. There you go. That connector's in there. You can see that they all look good. All the pins are in line. And there you go, finished connector. Now this would plug into here, like that. I'll put that into the side of the RV, hook my prefab cable up to that. Put the screws in, well, put the screws in first, then hook that cable up. And uh, that'll be it. To release that, once it's on the chassis, you do actually push that in and then pull this out. Oh, that came out pretty easy, so that's good. And uh, that's an IP67 rated waterproof connector. Again, I'll put the link below. But there it is, finished up, ready to rock and roll. All right, so now I'm ready to drill a hole so that I can install this. Right here, what I've done is I've put some painter's tape here. Um, for two reasons. One, so I could easily mark a place to drill the hole. And also, I'm drilling to fiberglass with a spade bit. There may be a little bit of tear out, uh, so I want to try to prevent that if I can. And yeah, that's about it. I'm going to drill a very small pilot hole right here to get started. Here is the spade bit that I'm using, which is a uh, 15 sixteenths. Now, boom, that'll start right there. And that is the exact, well, this is 24, or yeah, I think 23 or 24 millimeters. I can measure that, but uh, 15 sixteenths will be fine. It'll open it up, maybe a half a millimeter play 
and won't be too much of a problem. And then I will put that in and I'll mark the other two holes for the mounting. I'll drill a couple of holes for that once I get it lined up, make sure it's level, and away we go. So let's first start with this, make sure I got the drill going the right way. There it is. All right, I will uh, probably gonna put the camera down and do the uh, and do this without being on camera because I want to use two hands so I can keep it steady. All right, so I got the cable run. Still have my fish tape. Pull that back, but here it is. So I drilled a hole through this plastic, put a grommet there. Corrugated tubing comes out. This one was a little tough because this is. Uh, not aluminum, it's thin steel, but that was a little tough to get in. These were all easy. I got three of them here, I think. Yeah, three uh, into this aluminum. And I just made sure that I went far enough over because this is a steel beam here or a little I beam. Um, so just went a little bit over to this side so I didn't hit it. So it was easy just. You know, right through the aluminum. I'll hit that with some sealant, just some uh, rubberized sealant, just to you know, protect it from, you know, not that it'll rest all that much, but um, just a kind of safety measure. There's that one, and then it goes up. I'm gonna attach that one um, with some adhesive um, um, fastener up there. Uh, one thing, you haven't seen me on camera a lot, but I am wearing safety glasses. Well, cheaters, they're not full safety glasses. I didn't have those, but you want to make sure that you're definitely wearing some safety glasses and eye protection um, because there'll be little uh, fragments of aluminum. You don't want that falling into your eyes, obviously. And keep your mouth shut when you're doing it, too. Um, so that, just a little safety there. So, crawling around here, let's see, yeah, so this, I, I could put some, a grommet there, um, or just kind of bring this out so it doesn't uh, get jammed in there, uh, but I think my plan was to put it up through there, there's not too much there, and then in here I'll figure out a way to get that secured, let's see, man, climbing around down here, oh man, <laughs> All right, so there you go, it comes up. Like I said, there's aluminum behind here. So those went in easy. Comes along here, up out of the way. Over here, I didn't have a lot of real estate to um, put in any fasteners in here. So this is sitting up on top of there. I might just put tie wrap there to hold it. They, they tie wrapped from, from the factory on this one. So what I'll do is I'll just probably put a tie wrap there just to keep this from wiggling around. It's not that big a deal. It's not going to go very far. And then finally, comes over here. We've got one fastener there. And I didn't need to put another fastener. This will just go. And then uh, this is just tape that I had there. Um, I could probably pull this out and just put a fastener there to neaten that up and keep it tight. As a matter of fact, I'll do that. This is plastic. The sheet metal fastener will go right into that, no problem, and it will hold. Um, they could have done a little bit. So they did a grommet there too, a plastic grommet. And I'm doing these rubber grommets. <clears throat> and I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description so you can see what I used. So there, cable runs done. Just got to do the work in the uh, garage now, which is just really connect it all up and figure out how we're going to mount the router. There you go. All right, so we're finished. There it is. The other night it was pretty windy and we heard the wind knocking this against the ladder bit. So we'll put some Velcro there, tighten that up. Comes down, there's the penetration. Um, and the first part I said I'd use a spade bit there and I did use a spade bit, but it tore out a bit more. So I'd recommend using a round hole saw for this opening. For this particular connector, the 15 16 round saw uh, will work fine. Um, I put this little border here of plastic just to cover some of the tear out. It wasn't that wide. It was just really, really cosmetic. It would have not been a big deal, but I did want it to look neat. And um, so I did that. Here's the drip loop I talked about. And then finally, all the way over here, 
finished up the cable coming into the garage comes in over there I have an inline coupler to connect my prefab cable to my new connector that I put on the router end the 3d printed shelf that I mentioned it was too big to print on my 3d printer so I'm going to figure out some other solution for that which may be just paying somebody to print it for me um, if I don't get that done I'll figure out another way to mount that worst case is if we end up moving before I've got that solved I'll just disconnect it and stow it away while we're moving so let's do a speed test while we're here let's see run my Starlink there it is I'm online do a little speed test and there we go pretty cool up over 100 meg it's pretty good for this time of day actually so I'm getting about seven eight or nine upload so overall that was a pretty good deal I just gotta run this power cable I'll actually run it up from behind it'll come over and it'll plug into here and I'll put a little fastener in there to hold it in place and then basically when I'm ready to set it up I'll plug it back in obviously and away we go so there you go pretty neat install should make it a lot more convenient when we tear down and set up just have to disconnect one cable there unplug the router and away we go so thanks for watching if you want to see more stuff like this I'll try to do some more similar type tech stuff in the future you can subscribe to the channel and thank you very much have a good day